So my friend Richard Moore did a bunch of investigative work on the false educational qualifications of Alexander Pagani, and we recorded an interview together months ago, and I'm finally putting it together. And in the process of doing that, I found even more information. And to get us started, before I begin the interview, I want you to see this little mini documentary that I made. In April of the year 2022, Alexander Pagani was on the Smart Christians channel, and the topic of his education came up. His point is, why, why charge the... Uh, the money for the course. Very simple. I'm going to use this again. And and number one, I did not receive my schooling for free. I did not receive my schooling for free. I had to pay for my dissertation um, and all of my bachelor's and all of that. Um, so um, I don't do schooling for free. This man does not know the meaning of the word dissertation, and he doesn't know what a bachelor's degree even is. Let me show you some things. Notice how he uses the word bachelors in the plural form of bachelor, as if you have multiple bachelors. But look what happens when you type in bachelor's degree. It's bachelor apostrophe S. It's not multiple bachelors. Think of it like, who does the degree belong to? It belongs to the bachelor. That's why it is a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree is the highest degree you can earn at the undergraduate level. A bachelor's degree is also different from a master's degree or a doctorate, which are both graduate degrees. To pursue a master's degree, you must first successfully complete a bachelor's degree. I had to pay for my dissertation um, and all of my bachelor's and all of that. Um, so um, Nobody who's ever done a dissertation would say you had to pay for your dissertation. You pay for your schooling, and while you're in your doctoral program, you would be working on your dissertation. But Alexander Pagani cannot possibly be working on a dissertation because he wasn't working on a PhD. He doesn't have a master's degree. He doesn't even have a bachelor's degree. So he's just finding words that have something to do with college, and he's throwing them out there, hoping that nobody will stop to correct him. See right there. Now, it's in Spanish. See what I'm saying? And in case you want to know what denomination I come from, you see this logo right here? It's in Spanish. Right. See what I'm saying? See this logo right here? Right there, that's the Church of God where I come from, right there. See that right there? So that's so that you guys can see that I'm official here, man. Like, you know, I finished Bible school. I did five years, you know, um, and... There's two really broad categories. There's the undergraduate degree, and then there's the postgraduate degree. Now, Pagani doesn't have any of these, but if he was working on a dissertation, it would have to mean that he's already done the first part, undergraduate degree. It would also mean that he's done the postgraduate master's degree program, which is where you work on a thesis. And then, and only then, he would be working on a dissertation in the process of earning a doctoral degree or a PhD. My, uh, my, and I'm going to leave it here so that you guys can go look it up, screenshot it. All right. <laughs> so... All right, this is my, um, I'm a seminary graduate of Central Pentecostal Biblical Institute from the Northeast Spanish District, which is an affiliate of Lee University. He said, I'm a seminary graduate of Central Pentecostal Biblical Institute. But here's what it says on his website. He's a graduate of Central Pentecostal Bible Institute, not Biblical Institute. Does he really not know the name of the seminary he supposedly graduated from? Let's look at what a seminary actually is. I typed in, what is a seminary? Here's one of the first things that popped up. Seminaries are graduate schools that offer theological education, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, what is a graduate school? A graduate school is where you go after you've done your undergraduate studies. When you've finished your bachelor's degree, you then go on to do graduate level schoolwork. You would be in a graduate school if you were getting a master's degree. And then maybe two or three or four years later, you might get a doctoral degree. That's when you would work on your dissertation. Here's the article from Wikipedia that says the same thing. In the United States, the term Term seminary is used for graduate level theological institutions. I am from the Church of God International Offices in Cleveland, Tennessee. I come from the Spanish sector of it, and that's where I graduated and uh, did my dissertation and everything. And that's, and that's where, where I graduated, I graduated and, uh, and uh, did, uh, did, did my dissertation and everything. everything. This is where Pagani really embarrasses himself, and he proves himself to be a man who uses words that he doesn't even understand. What is a dissertation? A dissertation is a long-form piece of academic writing based on original research conducted by you. It is usually submitted as the final step in order to finish a PhD program. 
Your dissertation is probably the longest piece of writing you've ever completed. It requires solid research, writing, and analysis skills, and it can be intimidating to know where to begin. This is from a company that's selling templates for people who are going to be working on their dissertation. Here's another article. What is a dissertation? When you enter a doctoral program to earn a PhD, you will learn a lot about how to conduct your own research. At the culmination of your degree program, you'll produce a dissertation. A dissertation is a lengthy piece of written work that includes original research or expanded research on a new or existing topic. As the doctoral student, you get to choose what you want to explore and write about within your field of study. What is a thesis? A thesis is also a scholarly piece of writing, but it is for those who are graduating from a master's program. Remember, he doesn't even have a bachelor's degree, let alone a master's degree. A thesis allows students to showcase their knowledge and expertise within the subject matter they have been studying. The biggest difference between a thesis and a dissertation is that a thesis is based on existing research. On the other hand, a dissertation will more than likely require the doctoral student to conduct their own research and then perform analysis. The other big difference is that a thesis is for master's students and the dissertation is for PhD students. You know, people working on their doctoral degree. Another way to think of this is that by the time you get to the very end of your educational process and you're working on your dissertation, you've narrowed your focus to one very specific thing. And anybody who actually has done a dissertation and has a doctor's degree will tell you, I don't know anything about all these other things, but this is the one narrow little area where I've done a great deal of research. This is the one area where I am a true professional. To say that you have a dissertation in everything is one of the dumbest things a person could possibly say to prove that they have no idea what they're talking about. That's where I graduated and uh, did my dissertation in everything, you know, um, and I'm very proud of it. Um, and I think it's the most doctrinally sound thing. I, you know, I'm, I believe in de denominations. Well, some of them I believe in, and mm -hmm. that's where I got it from. So let me just show it to you again so that you can see it in case you go looking, looking it up. You know, it's actually is right here. See, all right, it's right there. Mm -hmm. See, see right there. Now, so I used a Spanish to English translator and the top part says roughly God's Church Ministerial Education Department. And here's the important part in the middle that explains what this is. We certify that Alexander Pagani has satisfactorily completed the courses prescribed by the Department of Ministerial Education of the Church of God Northeast Hispanic Region, USA. He has been examined, finding himself duly qualified in the corresponding courses. Therefore, we extend the present diploma of Ministerial Missionary. I'm not sure what this is, but it's not even a bachelor's degree, which also means that this is not a seminary degree. This is not a postgraduate seminary degree. Um, I'm a seminary graduate of Central Pentecostal Biblical Institute. Now, I did go to the Church of God Department of Education website, and they do have something that seems to be where he would have studied uh, an online course from their Hispanic Educational Department. These are some of the frequently asked questions. How much does it cost? It's basically about $2,800. How long does it take? Generally three years. Here's the most amazing part. At the very bottom there, am I guaranteed to pass? In short, yes. In our online courses, you are able to retest as many times as it takes to achieve a passing score. Do you see the part where it says you'll have to write a dissertation? Yeah, neither do I. Okay, now here is my interview with Richard Moore, and pay close attention because what you're going to see is not some honest mistakes from a guy who just doesn't know any better. I think what you're going to see is a pattern of deliberate deception. All right, and so it's your show, man, just whenever you're ready, and uh, we'll just start rolling with it and see if we can make sense of this thing. Yeah. Hey, everybody, this is Steve Kozar. I've got a guest, Richard Moore, on today to do an interview. And uh, as most of you know, I don't do a lot of interviews, so I don't know ever how to exactly do this right. But uh, just last night, Richard and I were really, really honored to be part of the uh, American Gospel. Um, I guess it was kind of a debut uh, live stream event. And so he's been really involved, as have I, with Brandon Kimber and the American Gospel Project. So We've kind of known about each other behind the scenes and uh, just talked for the first time face to face just earlier this week. And so you're in Germany. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. Really glad to be with you. Thanks for having me. I've uh, been really a fan of your work. Even people here in Germany say, oh, they love Hit the Bar. So um, appreciate you and appreciate your work behind the scenes and glad to do Thank this. Thank you finally. so much. Yeah. So right now, what time is it there? Just a quick note here that I had synchronization problems and... If you look at my face, my words don't always match up. So you don't want to look at my face anyway. 
we're at uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. So you're in the morning. So thanks for getting up early for me. Um, I didn't get up. Well, actually, I did get up early. I had so much on my mind. I got up at 5.30, which right. Lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening right now, Mr. Kozar. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, we we both kind of stepped into it with, you know, the the way that the AG stuff came out and the cessationist movie came out at the same time, yeah, which was not coordinated. It just was yeah. one of those things that just happened. And I'm not, you know, it's interesting. Just as a side note here, um, you know, I'm not really a cessationist, as it were, like the classic. Uh, I was going to ask you, know, you about MacArthur, that MacArthur cessationist. Um, I'm probably a, 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 a really a seatbelt continuationist. So if, if everything's practiced in order and the way it ought to be practiced in the Bible, as the Bible describes the gut, the, the, let's see the sign gifts, tongues, let's say, for instance, um, then, um, you know, that that's kind of sort of my, my breed as it were, but it's not happening really. I mean, the, the way that the tongues gift is not being practiced the way uh, that the Bible describes it. So in, in actuality, probably I am a cessationist. So that's a really that good point to make. Yeah, because on our show, as much as we've talked about the problems with the hyper charismatic NAR world and the megachurch world in general, we've never come out and said, here's why you should be a cessationist. Right. And the guys who made that movie contacted me a few months ago, and I, I hadn't really had contact with them before. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really even do anything with the movie i took some notes and i never even gave them the notes because they were near the end of the project and i thought i got other stuff to do right now i got so many deadlines and right. they got this tight deadline it's really not worth my time to try to give them any input at this point it's too late in the game but okay. when i saw the video that uh that ruslan guy did oh yeah well at first daniel kalenda did a really bad video and so i said david you're only two hours away you want to come up here and do a video about his his uh you know his video and on the way driving here yeah i i texted him the link to the ruslan video i said we should do this one instead oh yeah that so i, I, I had bet, i bet that made him hot right he was pretty he yeah seemed he pretty was, hot when he saw <laughs> ruslan going after his film uh yeah you know and i think i think one of the points in in you introducing yourself that way i think it's really important to say there is this false dichotomy between you either have to be a, a cessationist uh, Calvinist, or you have to be a charismatic Arminian. Those are the two options that sometimes people are are mistakenly believing that you have. And there's right. there's a lot of nuances, and there's a lot of different variations, and a lot of different church bodies that view a lot of things just a little bit differently. And it's important to to make that clear. Yeah, I mean, you know, it really what what it boils down to is if if the gifts aren't practiced like the the new testament describes them one or two at a time they just let's talk mm -hmm. about tongues if we're sticking with tongues let's just talk about tongues the, the 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 new testament describes tongues one or two at a time interpreter must be present and interpretation must happen not in chaos but order paul describes all that in that passage mm -hmm. in those passages we they ignore all that and so all these nar uh you know kind of oriented uh, events meetings they'll just say speak in tongues and it's just like first of all that is right there unbiblical immediately right. immediately, immediately it's unbiblical everyone is speaking in tongues all at one time and then it has to be another language it has to be an undecipherable uh language that is spoken by people that you can supernaturally speak you know without any learn knowledge or learning of it um and so you know yeah so anyways. and the, <laughs> and to just just to kind of put a capstone on that thought we know that there are tons of genuine christian believers who love god's word and who are a continuationist and they are as frustrated as we are by all of the stuff happening that unfortunately does speak for them if if, if you're charismatic today you know and you're frustrated by guys like pagani or like bill johnson or todd white or a million other people yeah, we're on the same page with you. We want yeah. to go and say, what does the Bible say about this? Now, we might disagree about some of those smaller things, and and it might even get a bit heated as we try to figure stuff out. But yeah. we we totally know that there are continuationists who sincerely love God's word and are frustrated yeah. just as much as any cessationist is frustrated. And In fact, they may be more frustrated because they feel like they're being misrepresented. And all we're saying, I think, and this is what I think Brandon would say about the American Gospel Project is, I'm 
Bill Johnson represents a huge majority of people now. He just does. He has a huge yeah. influence. And, uh, you know, Joyce Meyer has a huge influence. Joel Osteen has the biggest church in America. You know, right. sorry, charismatics who genuinely don't like that stuff either, but he just does. So yeah. that's what we're referring to when we point out how how influential that movement has become. And, and just to put another capstone on that, maybe a little bit, the NAR critique that we have is not a charismatic critique. I don't have I don't have a continuationist cessationist beef with the NAR, as it were. My beef is that this is a uh, non-biblical, unbiblical, and, and that apostles and prophets, the office of apostle and prophet, do not exist today. Um, so I, I'm a cessationist in that. Um, I don't think there was a, a office of a New Testament prophet anyways. I, I, I never have seen that in New Testament scripture. There was an office yeah. of apostle, and it belonged to the 12 alone. Our governmental structure um, for, for, for church life is, uh, is deacons. I almost said apostles. Did you hear that? Did you catch that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, our governmental structure for, for churches today is, is elders, pastors, deacons, and the presbytery, as described in Timothy, Titus, and, and, and Peter and other places in Acts. So, um, yeah, that's the capstone on that. And But I guess we didn't uh, come to talk about that today, did we? <laughs> we can <laughs> we do that probably... another time, yeah. <laughs> Let's, how about if you give an introduction to the, the role that you have in this researching of Pagani yeah. and his educational background? Yeah, yeah, I'd just love to introduce myself, first of all, a little bit. Um, I'm Richard Moore. Um, I am a longtime youth minister, church minister. Um, I've been in youth ministry now altogether 25 years. Um, I've, I've been in church planting, uh, youth ministry in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and now for the last mm -hmm. nine years, I've been in Germany um, as a missionary and youth work, uh, church planting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And now sort of an accidental theologian, as it were. <laughs> so... <laughs> To give some background, an accidental expert in this movement, and uh, I think I explained a little bit of, of that on, on on our live stream last night. But I became aware of the NAR, and and I had known about it. I had known about Bethel in California years ago, but I had not known about sort of this new iteration. I want to say maybe the 2000 to 2020 iteration, and became aware okay. of it by moving here. Um, and the grave sucking thing, actually the grave soaking, they, they don't like calling it grave soaking, grave sucking, grave soaking, uh, mantle grabbing, redigging the wells, all that, uh, stuff. That's what they call it. We get mantle acquisition. Yeah. I like that you said that mantle <laughs> acquisition. Um, exactly. How do I exactly acquire a, a, a mantle? Um, uh, so exactly. Um, and so I became aware of that because Ben Fitzgerald, uh, the leader of Awakening Europe here in Germany, um, had uh, been known to do that. That video was floating around. I became aware of Awakening Europe. And I'm like, who is this guy? He's Australian. He's got a thick Australian accent. It's pretty clear. And I kn recognized him before. And I thought, oh, that's it. He was in that grave sucking stuff. And I uh, went back to do check that out. And sure enough, he's there. He is Smith Wigglesworth grave and uh, Evan Roberts grave and, and the Welsh revival. And I'm like, this is not Christian. Uh, this is crazy. Like, mm -hmm. and then start digging, peeling back the onion layers, connected into Bethel. What's Beth? Oh yeah. That's that weird church that um, we had gotten a, just as a side note, we had gotten a CD from someone who had come from Bethel. My daughter was born with down syndrome and had some, mm. um, some, problems at, on, at, at her birth with epileptic seizures and mm -hmm. someone gave her a cd this is going to help you immensely and basically it's a bill johnson sermon cancer's bad god's good thus cancer has to come from satan or sickness comes from satan that's kind mm -hmm. of the, the the gist of that sermon at the time and i thought what in the world i'm a youth pastor at the time this is trash this is total garbage and his his father is actually at the time if you remember dying of cancer and I tracked mm -hmm. that down and found that out. And I looked at their church website and I thought, this is fringe, fringe. Whoa, whoa. You know, mm -hmm. and even had that look back in the day, you know, the nineties where the internet was just, uh, sorry, early two thousands internet's just coming to its own and, and people are starting to have nice internet sites and stuff. And it looked weird, you know? And so I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And I took that CD and I just threw it in the trash. That's the only place I had for stuff like that at the moment. And so, um, then years later, here it comes. I'm like, oh, 
they're Bethel and they're popular and they're mm. millions and millions of views on YouTube for every single song. And they're affecting the teenagers I'm ministering to here in Germany. And so that's, and then I started peeling back the onion layers. And then, um, then I said, well, let me just put it in a book form. <laughs> and so I wrote Divergent Theology, an inquiry into the theological characteristics of the word of faith, third wave movement, and the new apostolic reformation. So, Hold that up again so people can see it. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Divergent Theology, it's uh, subsequently since been um, uh, published in German uh, called Entwurzelt, um, which means uprooted. And so I looked into these movements um, you know, more on the theological Holly and Doug, you know, they've done their, their due diligence on the breadth of the movement. And, uh, I did the, I looked into the theological aspects, um, dominionism and, uh, I call it neo-gnosticism. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what else do I have in here? Her historical heresies and comparing them to some historical heresies, um, orthodoxy, what is orthodoxy and, and, um, you know, other, the, the I would call the Gnostic syncretistic occult like practices that they do. Um, mm -hmm. and so just putting those things out there and yeah, that's, uh, sort of how I know about this movement, how I became aware of it and, uh, what makes me, I guess, particularly capable of speaking to what we're wanted to talk about today was, uh, my, my degrees. So I w graduated, I hate doing this, Steve. I really do. I do not like to toot my own horn in any way. But I graduated with a, a Bachelor of Arts in Theology and Youth Ministry from Columbia International University. I also received a, a Master of Arts uh, there uh, from CIU, Columbia International University, um, in Leadership, Evangelism, and Discipleship. And so now I am a PhD candidate um, for... You know, which is it makes me capable of speaking to what we're going to talk about today. So that's just a short introduction yeah. to me. Uh, enough about me. Let's get on with it. <laughs> right, so, yeah. So th I guess the reason we uh, wanted to get together was because I became aware of um, through all my feeds, I get all these, uh, I follow all these people and uh, Pagani, Alexander Pagani received a honorary doctorate from Next Dimension University. Um, it's been September, I believe, early September, which, uh, funny enough, uh, he has now removed this post from his, uh, from his Instagram. I have yeah. pretty conclusively shown that, seen that he has removed it, um, because I had three or four different places. I saved the link for it and, um, Dawn, uh, Hill and I did a, a show on it and she has it in her show. So let me share my screen and we can show what happened. This, the reel he posted, this is Alexander Pagani's own reel, not something that was, you know, made up or something, whatever, just so people know. And, uh, he received an honorary doctorate from, from, uh, at N next dimension university. So let me share a screen, see if I can get that, uh, yeah, pull that thing up one second. Give me a sec here. Figure out which one it is. All right. Can you see that? Yep. All right. So, uh, all right, here we go. We're going to go full screen. And this is Alexander Pagani receiving his honorary doctorate. Real quick. God bless you, sir. All right. All right. So that was it, basically. Um, let me uh, stop the share real quick. All right. So, um, yeah, so that was Alexander Pagani receiving his honorary doctor from Next Dimension University. I thought, hmm, this seems fishy. Yeah, fishy is putting it nicely. Next Dimension School of Theology or University or Bible College, whatever they're calling it this month, is a total scam. It's a total scam. You can see that from some of the comments from people who wrote these Google reviews. And hey, what about the Better Business Bureau? Here's a complaint from uh, January of 2023. This person says they couldn't afford the $7,500 and this guy... The fake doctor, Joel McLeod, said, instead of $7,500, how about $3,500? So she puts it on her credit card. She immediately changes her mind, and she can't get her money back. And there is Alexander Pagani with the fake doctor getting his fake doctor's degree. 
here's the fake doctor, Joel McLeod, giving fake honorary doctor of theology degrees to a whole room full of people. And wait for it, something happens and he gets confused. Wait a minute, what's he looking at? I don't know, but there he is. There he is, Alexander Pagani. Now, he was already being promoted before this thing even took place. There he is, Dr. Alexander Pagani. Everybody's a doctor in this world. Fake doctors, but still, they're not just doctors, they're, they're scholars. scholars. Okay, so take a look at this. This is the ad for the graduation ceremony itself, which was supposed to be at 3 p.m. And then that same day, same location, if you stuck around and waited until evening, they have a uh, formal banquet and ball, but you're gonna need to buy a ticket. You've got your choice. Do you want the $100 seat, the $125 seat, or the $150 seat? I think I figured out what fake Dr. Sparkly Jacket McLeod was thinking at this awkward moment. He's going, man, I can trick this whole room full of people into buying useless honorary doctoral degrees. I could have been making a lot more money on those banquet tickets. <laughs> Okay, I gotta show you just one more thing from this Dr. Joel McLeod, Mr. Sparkly Jacket. He started this magazine, God Life Magazine. It only has one issue from 2019. Would you like to take out an ad in this essentially non-existent magazine? Oh, it's the same thing as making a donation to Next Dimension University. Yeah, that sounds like a legitimate magazine advertising program. But you know, maybe you don't want to advertise, maybe you just want to give them a large amount of money. Yeah, that seems like a really wise investment because they, they had that one issue back in 2019. So where is this magazine from? It's from Next Dimension University. Wait, or maybe it's called Next Dimension School of Theology. I mean, the most important thing is that you give your credit card number to Dr. Joel McLeod. And let me maybe uh, give you some background why. People can receive honorary doctorates. So, so it, I've been in the education world for quite a long time, way too long. <laughs> uh, and uh, now it, a PhD candidate. And it seemed fishy because I have been at uh, honorary doctorate presentations before. I'll give you one example. In 1994, I, I graduated from Columbia International University and Johnny Erickson Tata received a, an honorary doctorate. Um, it's the first one that the school had, uh, had uh, given in 75 years. So honorary doctorates are given out, but they um, are given out to people who usually visit the school and are the commencement address speakers. For instance, Johnny Erickson Tata gave the commencement address, and they're very seldom and very special. So the one that Johnny Erickson Tata got was a very special occasion. And literally, like with tears in my eyes, I can think about it and remember it because now mm. her ministry years later has been such a dear, dear thing to our family. And uh, we have come close to her ministry because of our, our daughter being born with Down syndrome and the ministry. Oh, yeah. Us. It's very dear to us. And I remember that so fondly now. And I didn't realize at the time really what it what it meant. But mm. honorary doctorates are given and several things you need to do and understand it with an honorary doctorate. It's not an academic degree, right? It is not an academic degree. So uh, with, come, with that comes some things. You can't put a DR in front of your name, doctor. You cannot call yourself doctor. Um, it's like saying, you know, um, I have a, a, an honorary MD and I'm going to do brain surgery on you. Um, no, I don't think so. I want a real doctor who studied this thing and knows what they're doing, a brain surgeon doing brain surgery on me, right? For instance, just give you a for instance there. And with a doctor, you can put the the the, the title uh, pre-nominally, as they say, before your name, but it's very rare. Hmm. And you do it with a doctor, D-R, with H-C in, in, in parentheses. Honor, honorary causa uh, and for lat, latin it's latin for uh because of honor right not because of academic work right so um and and then there's also doctor of letters so uh johnny erickson tata received a doctor of letters um in her in her uh in her honorary you know uh time there when i was at, in 94 uh, 98 i graduated excuse me and uh, so, yeah, there's lots of stuff going on here at the same time. So 
then Pagani in that reel, um, he claimed to have a, a doc, doctor's title. So if I can read it real quick, I'll read yeah. the, um, read his post, his post, uh, which he's taken down now just subsequently, just so we all are clear. He has removed it. I don't exactly know why, but um, he removed it. So we can guess. <laughs> we, we can guess why, but I don't, well, I, that's speculation, but you're right. We can make an educated guess. He might have gotten pushed back. I don't know. Um, Don and I did a show on this to expose it because it's not a, mm-hmm. it's not a legitimate thing. Oh, by the way, uh, 80 people received honorary doctorates at the same time. Let me just what? go. Yeah. So let me go to the, I have the, um, the picture. Here's a picture. If I can maybe share my screen here, here are the names of all the people who received. So yeah. <laughs> when, when I was watching that footage, he looked like he was one person all, uh, amongst many, all, getting their degrees like it was an it would look like a typical graduation ceremony right but that would only be the case if they were actually graduating and actually getting degrees right so an if honorary gra- doctorate is usually one person being treated very special and unique it's not a whole group of people getting the same thing at the same time i had no idea that's bizarre so he got yeah you're you're right on the money 100 percent. so uh, bizarre too i don't know if you noticed they had they were playing like kind of like chill hip-hop in the background did you hear no, that? No, I didn't. I didn't hear the audio. Oh, sorry. The audio might have been bad, but it's yeah. kind of like doom, ch, da, ga, boom, doom, ch, you know. <laughs> um, while he, while you know, they called his name and they're playing the music at the same time, and uh, so wow, you're right. So here, let me share my screen one more time, and here are the recipients. Uh, of do you see that? This is the program that uh, someone posted on Facebook, honorary doctorates, honorary doctor of theology. And, and I counted 80 names and there, it looks like they're awarding. You see, can you see that Steve? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a doctor of biblical literacy, um, I guess it'd be, it'd be awful if you got a doctor of biblical illiteracy, maybe they <laughs> should give those out, but um, I digress. Um, honorary doctor here. And there's more honorary doctors over here on the right side. So he here's Pagani here. Uh, where is he? I'm sorry. He was, yeah, he's on that list somewhere. I don't, I don't have it right off the top, but um, yeah. So all these received honorary doctor of theology. So I was like, wait a minute, usually one, two at the most would receive an honorary doctorate uh, in any kind of graduation ceremony. Right. right. Um literally i i've never heard of more than two and i actually looked it up and then so then i actually steve you're gonna you're gonna like this i actually called the accrediting agency of this school next dimension university i'm not going to say the name because the guy threatened to sue me right away as soon as he called me back so um the actually the president called me back and um so i looked into accrediting agencies then like wait a minute this is sketchy because 80 honorary doctorates don't get awarded in one ceremony that never ever happens right by definition this is no longer an honorary doctorate this is a this is like play acting this is like a bad junior high skit of people pretending they're getting doctor's degrees it's just wow like that. that's a good that's a good analogy a bad junior high skit <laughs> Don't don't make fun of my children. They're still in junior high, still working this okay. thing out. Do you call it junior high? I'm still I'm I'm holding on to that, man. Everybody calls it middle school. I like yeah, junior right. high. It's still junior high to you, yeah. So you're right. It it doesn't make it honorary anymore. And um, so I looked into it like, wait, eighty at one time, and it looks like more than eighty. I couldn't really quite see in yeah. that picture, but um. That was that was the event, the Next Dimension University, and Next Dimension University, by the way, kind of sounds like um, like something Charles Xavier from the X Men would would start as a school. Um, also, sounds like a, a hairspray from the nineteen seventies. Sticky yet holds better than any leading aerosol hairspray. All right, so Next Dimension, <laughs> we're dig- <laughs> we're, dig- we're digging in, and so eighty people got a, a degree. Um, and so I looked into the, the organization and just take a wild guess, this organization, this, this accrediting organization is what kind of church? 
Oh, it's think? Pentecostal of some sort. Some it's a some... it's a four it's a four square church in California. Yeah. Uh, I looked it up, and there it is um, on Google Earth. I'm like, wait a minute, you know. And I called the number, and uh, sure enough, I called the number on the church to make sure, like, hey, do y'all know you have an accrediting agency in your in your church? That's the address that's given here. Uh, so <laughs> they called back, and he threatened to sue me right away, and. Um, and and I actually asked, like, wait, when was the last time you have seen? Um, no, actually, I, I won't. I won't. I won't say that story. Sorry, I can't say that story. Probably, uh, because I don't want to get sued, Steve. Um, let me let me break in here to to mention how uh, I think it was about a year and a half, two years ago now. Um, yeah, almost two years ago, not quite. I did that video yeah. about. Um, Dr. Michael Brown and Sid Roth and, you know, really trying to get his attention to show him how bad things were on Sid Roth's show and how a number of people in that world claim to be doctors. Mm -hmm. And I looked up all of their so-called uh, yeah. uh, official, um, what would you call it? Uh, degrees. Their qualifications. Or degrees. A qualification, Jay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's all fake. It's all diploma mills. It's all, yep. you know, if you look at the address of these places, it's either the address of a completely different school. So they're just using that address yep. as, as a, as a mailing address, but they're not actually a physical location or it's like a, a bad office strip mall place with no signage at all. Yep. It's just an office somewhere where somebody's just shuffling envelopes. It's all pretend it's all a scam. To get a doctoral, they were like, you can get a, your own doctor's degree, a PhD for, you know, $1,800 and, you know, a minimum amount of work. Just fill in some forms, yeah. answer some questions. Yeah. Now, it's really yeah. shameful. It really is shameful. This is fraudulent. This is not just, you know, a different way of doing it. You know, yeah. there's there's a number of different ways that you can get a doctoral degree. No, by definition, that would mean they're not doctor's degrees. They're fake. Let me let me uh, break in there. You're right um, uh, with the idea of what ha what's happening here. So there are academic institutions and there are accrediting agencies. The accrediting agencies actually exist. They are not fraudulent in the sense that they don't exist or something like that. Right? They they exist. They are LLCs, but they are not accredited or are acknowledged by the um, Department of Education. Right. Does that make sense. So there is a fake list of accrediting i'm gonna share i can share that uh screen real quick too just to kind of see i if did I the show. same thing i looked at these schools they all have yeah. the same websites they're like there's three uh squares on the front and they just yeah. changed the names but they all have that official looking logo that looks like a you know something they got out of some clip art book from the 1980s with yeah. like this royal looking uh exactly. script and yeah. stuff <clears throat> the websites by themselves just look fraudulent you can tell almost immediately yeah yeah. And it's all these people who want to get a shortcut. And I mean, we should bring up the giant elephant in the room, which is these are the people who say it's all about the heart. It's not about the head. Yeah. You know, so there's this, they, there's this website just to, so you can track those accrediting agencies that are probably fraudulent. It's called get it, get educated.com. And we can get those links to you and you can post those, but you can yeah. track and just look up. There's a list right there and you just go through an alphabetical list and see if your accrediting agency is, is sort of maybe probably fraudulent. Now the guy who called me back, uh, he said that we're not fraudulent. We actually give, um, give degrees to people who are wanting them. We are not accredited or are recognized by the Department of Education, but neither was Jesus, he said, actually. So, <laughs> so you know, the Department of Education is not antagonistic to us. We don't, you know, we don't, right. they're, they're just trying to make sure you're getting a rigorous education that's worth its weight in the money yep. you're paying, basically. Yeah. Yep. So all said and done, it, it, they it, are. It's a, it's just shameful yeah. that we have non-Christian agencies trying to protect Christians from bad, fraudulent Christians practicing this this whole fake degree world. It, 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 so it, this reminds me very much of when a non-Christian journalist does the research necessary to prove that somebody like Benny Hinn is a fraud, and everybody who loves Benny Hinn says, well, they're just liberals. Well, yeah. whether they're liberal or not is irrelevant. It's the research that they're doing that proves their case. 
Look yeah. at the research. Look at the facts. It's the same thing with these accrediting agencies. The the U.S. government Department of Education is not my favorite organization by any means. Right. right. But yeah. to say that they're just automatically to be thrown away and not even considered because, you know, well, they're just a bunch of liberals. This is this is real backwards thinking. Right. Yeah. You're right on the money. And so that's their I they're kind of their MO. That's what he that's what this guy told me. Now, um, should we try to do any kind of accreditation at all? Certainly. I mean, my own, I actually looked up then my own schools, my current school's accreditation. And I looked at that they that they also had problems with getting accreditation. Now, get, just give me some, I'll give you a fair balance, like look at this thing. Um, Steve Levikoff wrote the book, Frame It and Claim It. Pretty funny, huh? I like that one. Um, kind of like the name it and claim it prosperity yeah. gospel. You frame it and claim it. And um, he actually mentioned my school's uh, my school's accrediting agency in that, that they had problems. They were not really mm -hmm. legitimate and they had problems being recognized by the Department of Education for years. And the reason being, I, I actually unearthed the reason why they were having trouble is because they were committed to six day creationism and mm -hmm. it, biblical inerrancy. So that makes sense. Like, yeah, you might have difficulty as a Christian. I mean, those two things, I believe those two things. I'm a hundred percent and I'm so glad they stuck to their guns and fought it out um, to be recognized by the Department of Education and, and have rigor, academic rigor. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's huge. Like that, that takes some guts and some stick to itiveness because this process is not easy. Accreditation, get, being an accreditation agency is not easy. I'll give you a, a balance and understanding of my accredited agency. They have a hundred, not even a hundred institutions that they accredit. Okay. And so this, they have to uh, keep track of those agencies. They have to be auditing I, them to some extent. Th they're haunting them. That's exactly right. The accrediting agency has to, be on top of it. And so I thought, wow, that's a lot of institutions that they're covering. And this other accrediting agency that I contacted accredits a thousand schools. Wow. I couldn't believe it. And Which they means they're not, they're not doing anything. They're not, they're not checking not, up on anything. They're not checking anything. They're probably I, getting, they're getting paid to hand over their accreditation that's it so all of these over a thousand institutions are slipping them some money and they're turning around and saying we accredit you i think a, a hundred institutions would be too much to to accredit for accrediting agency that's that's you know maybe it doesn't have a huge staff but that's that's a lot and i and a thousand is not they're not doing anything they can't even visit those schools in a year you know, with their staff. So, and they only have 261 uh, institutions listed on their accrediting website. So something was fishy for sure. Anyways, um, all said and done, there is some challenge, of course, to become an accrediting agency, um, yeah. especially if you're a Christian theological institution or want to accredit theological institutions. But these guys just, I think they just give carte blanche, as it were, um, and just... Uh, throw them their accreditation. So this has been an issue since the early 90s. Steve Levikoff wrote his book, I think, in 93 or 4, Frame It and Claim It. Um, and so, yeah, um, what else do I want to bring up? Um, then, oh, then Pagani re received a second um, uh, uh, doctoral degree in the same month. And I can share that. Let me sh let me share that uh, with you, the screen. All right, so we go to Pagani's um, own Instagram. And uh, here we go. This is him receiving his Doctor of Pentecostal Theology from Pentecostal Theological University. And let's click through. Um, I, what I noticed already is I don't know if the, the, the degree was framed when he received it, but uh, there are my two frames back there in the back. You see, Steve, um, my yeah. mommy, my mommy had to frame mine. They didn't give me mine when it framed. I guess he's a superstar. So I don't exactly know why he would receive a, a degree framed. I've never seen that before at a graduation ceremony that a recipient receives their degree already framed. Well, you know, it's funny. The reason he's got this is all appearances. It, it has nothing to do with rigorous academic work. Yeah. It's all about the appearances. So it would make sense that the thing is already framed. Probably, yeah. Whatever so amount this... of money he gave, the whole purpose was that he could show this thing. Yeah, let's slip. It wasn't that here. he actually did the work. It's that he gets to show this thing and pretend that right. he's done the work. Yeah. So uh, we've got his degree close up of it. Pen can you see that? 
Yep. Pentecostal Theological University. I noticed the Pente- that the title of the school is um it shadowed. Do you see yeah. that shadow? That's that doesn't happen on on degrees. I don't think. I've never seen someone's um someone's degree that has a shadow for the name of the university. Secondly, down on the bottom, usually September 23rd, 2023, uh typically your uh, my degrees and I've seen other degrees. I've not seen a degree that has the date actually uh numbered out it's usually written out okay as i was editing this video i just typed in fake diplomas and i found out that this one from pagani looks almost exactly like some of the fake diplomas that you can buy 129 dollars for that one there's pagani's this one here looks pretty similar that one's 204 dollars now back to pagani's and then this last one here now, I'm not claiming that Pagani himself bought fake diplomas. I'm just saying that any rinky-dink institution can have diplomas made, and those diplomas are only good for show. They really don't represent anything. Okay, so here is the homepage for Pentecostal Theological University, or PTU. Here's the entire faculty. Notice the combination of administrators and teachers. You've got mom and dad and the son, and here is what it looks like when they have a graduation ceremony. The son, Nathan, is interpreting for his dad, who is Samuel. Who no one has laid hands Los upon que them. En internet. Those who look in the internet. Una ordenación. For, uh, an ordination. Aleluya, sin imposición de manos. Without imposition of the hands. Sin derramamiento de aceite. Without the pouring out of anointing oil. Sin la Without the commission. De una iglesia. Of a church. Que lo llama. That has called para us. Para hacer un trabajo. To do a job. Hay lo que se llama. There are those that have been called. Pero eso no tiene. But that doesn't have. El apoyo del cielo. The appointment or the backing of heaven. Yo voy para algún sitio. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this. Sí, there is very little information on the internet about any of these teachers or this school, but here is the LinkedIn page for the guy you just heard yelling a second ago. And he's got a prominent picture of his prominent star student, Alexander Pagani. Anyways, uh, and then he says here, uh, let's go to uh, this one here. Where he's holding it up. Uh, more than five full years, full-time study. Um, so just to give a perspective a PhD, if you did a PhD or, or, or a D-man or any kind of theological doctoral work, it's going to be three years just by the, by itself, just by itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm packing, you know, three years into like seven. That's how I'm doing mine, <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm doing the extended plan as it were, because I can't <laughs> afford it because I can't afford it. It's 2000, $2,000 per, per course. So um, anyways, five years of full-time study, that you, you don't do a demon in five years. He's talking to probably about his whole breadth of study from Bible college. He says he's got a, a legitimate Bible college degree too, and a seminary, a biblical seminary degree. You don't call a seminary is biblical or it is studying the Bible. So putting the biblical in front of it doesn't make it better. Is that- so when we recorded this and Richard said this, I had not done any of the research that I have since done about Pagani, and I hadn't found those clips or heard those clips that I played in the beginning of this video. And one of the things that really stands out is when he was talking to Corey Miner, he said, yeah, I spent five years getting this diploma. I'm official here, man. Like, you know, I finished Bible school. I did five years, you know. Um, now, here he is just a little over a year later saying, yeah, I spent five years getting this diploma. So I typed in Pentecostal Theological University, Orlando, Florida, September 23rd, 2023. And the only thing that showed up was the original Instagram post from Pagani himself. There is no post from this so-called school having a ceremony. It's that small. It's that obscure. There are no results for Pentecostal Theological University. There's something called Pentecostal Theological Seminary, but that's not the same thing. It's a completely different school. Let's take a look at the Pentecostal Theological University website. Here's the page that has the tuition and the costs, and I want you to look at the bottom part of that box. You can get a Doctor of Divinity, an honorary one, if you've been in ministry for over 25 years, and it'll cost you 1900 bucks. That's not an honorary degree. That's buying a fake diploma from a fake school to have a fake doctor's degree. That's really what that is in, in essence. Now, I don't think Pagani has 25 years of ministry experience, but he wrote a couple of books. And so I think the guy said, look, give me the 1900 bucks. I'll give you the diploma. We'll call it even. 
This is all a show. This is what Pagani wants. He wants to be able to tell everybody he's a doctor. Let's read this together. Admission free. Join me in person. I'm in Orlando, Florida, receiving my real accredited doctorate in theology from Pentecostal Theological University. Tomorrow, Saturday, September 23rd, 2 p.m. There's the address. This is not honorary, but an earned doctorate with my books serving as dissertations. Everything about this is wrong. Everything. First of all, saying admission is free is really bizarre. Like, what, you got to pay an admission fee to go to a regular graduation at a real college? And then he says he's receiving my real accredited doctorate in theology. This is another instance where Pagani proves that he doesn't know what he's talking about. First of all, can you imagine somebody who got their bachelor's degree, got their master's degree, entered their doctoral program, and then they finally were going to graduate and they told everybody, come to see me get my real doctoral degree. Yeah, that's not fishy, right? But the really bad part is the word accredited. You don't accredit your degree or your diploma. You accredit the school. And the school that he's getting this fake degree from is accredited by a fake accreditation organization. And I'm going to explain that. So here's what it says on the Pentecostal Theological University website. We are a member of the Accrediting Commission International from BB, Arkansas. And if you go to the website of the ACI, you'll see that they have their home office, which is actually just a church. And you'll see this guy, John Scheel, PhD. He's the president. He's the guy in charge of this official accrediting office. So I looked up this guy and he has a PhD from Toledo Bible College and Seminary. Hmm. Guess what I did next? I typed that in to see if there is such a thing as the Toledo Bible College and Seminary. Remember, we're talking about Dr. Scheel here. He's the guy in charge of accrediting all these other schools, including the place where Pagani claims he got his doctoral degree. Well, there is no such school. It's been out of business for a long time. However, I found this article from a website called Degree Info, and it's whatever happened to Trinity's accreditation bid. It turns out that that college that doesn't exist anymore turned into another college. And the reason why they had to change the name and had all sorts of problems was because the whole thing was fake. So on this Degree Info blog, I found this guy, John Baer, who actually wound up writing a number of books on this topic. And here's what he says. He's going to quote from a Christianity Today article way back from 1981. One school that advertises frequently and presents itself to the unknowing student as being more than it actually is, is Toledo Bible College and Seminary in Tennyson, Indiana. Founder John D. Brooke, for all practical purposes, awarded himself the THD, a doctoral degree, from Toledo since he received it not long after he started the school in the late 60s. He operated it there until 1978 when, for all practical purposes, he was forced out of the state by the Ohio Board of Regents. The article goes on to discuss in detail the two accreditations claimed, one from the later discredited International Accrediting Commission and the other even flimsier from the American Association of Specialized Colleges run by Gordon DaCosta, one of the more colorful flimflammers in the annals of phony degrees. Now, check out this sentence that I have um, highlighted there. The article quotes former Toledo faculty on being alarmed when, quote, students were admitted who could barely read and dumbfounded to learn at graduation that some of these students were awarded doctorates. And that's where this guy got his PhD. And who is he? Let's go back. He is the guy who is in charge of the Accreditation Commission International. And they are in charge of a lot of small schools, including this one, the Pentecostal Theological University. University. And what is this all about? It's about Dr. Pagani being able to pretend that he's an actual doctor. Okay, back to the interview now. Richard's going to explain a lot of this in more detail. A seminary mm -hmm. by itself, is you're studying the theology. That's what seminary is. It's not, you, know, you, get, my, you get my drift? Yep. Uh, the, the, the adjective in front of it doesn't is not necessary. <laughs> he wants to make it, put it there because he wants to prove that he's doing something uh, biblical. Anyways, um, five years of full study. You couldn't do that. He, he, I think he's talking about, I'm not sure, but I think he's talking about his, his Bible college, his seminary and his doctoral studies, which he didn't study here. He admits it. Um, that wouldn't take that. That wouldn't take that short. Um, I went to Bible college for four years, seminary for three. That makes me, um, now it's seven. And if you, if I had done it in the right amount of time, three more years, for a total of 10 years of study to receive a doctoral dissertation, to receive a doctorate. 
Right. So um, I don't know what he's talking about, but if you started from your whole course of study from undergraduate study to PhD study or doctoral study, it would, should take about 10 years, probably more. Um, it took me more. <laughs> um, official credits earned, my past seminary transcript validated, my books serving as dissertations. I'm going to highlight this real quick. You see that highlight? My books serving as dissertations. I'm going to tell you, I'm looking at the camera, look at me really seriously and earnestly. That would never, ever happen. Right. Never. I asked my father-in-law, let me, let me hold this, let me get this real quick. My father-in-law is a missiologist who is a longtime professor of missiology, studied at Aberdeen, got his PhD at Aberdeen, wrote this book, this doctoral work, um, some, sheesh, I don't even know how many pages, 500 something pages. He's an overachiever though. So <laughs> um, 500 pages on the life of George Friedrich Witzedamp, the missionary uh, to the uh, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea. Huh. Very interesting, but that's that's his dissertation. And I asked him, just as a side note, I asked him, hey, uh, have you ever heard of anybody receiving a doctorate or PhD for previous work written? He said, I've never, ever heard of that. Never. Ex he said, actually, except one time I can remember there was a missiologist, German missiologist, who um, who wrote lots of work and was just world renowned for his missiology. They put his work together and they took several ideas from different works and put it together in one work and posthumously awarded him a doctorate. That's the only time he could ever think of someone having received a dissertation for previous work written. I actually, I, I know I tried to do that. <laughs> but hey, can I, can I, I wrote this book. Can I, is there any way? Nope. Mm -mm. You could retool it and redo it and rewrite it. Uh, right. So, it so in essence, when he says my books serving as dissertations, what he's saying is this isn't a real degree from a real uh, accredited, legitimate institution of education. It, it just isn't by definition. He's, he's explaining it in his own words. It, it 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 is a real accrediting age accredited school. I looked at this school, uh, Pentecostal theological, but it's accredited by a degree mill uh, accrediting. Right, agent. right. And my book it's a circular. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, circular. it's a whole. It's just like the, in the um, like if you get, uh, well, here. I'm gonna stop the share real quick. Or, yeah, show me that. What what you got there? <laughs> this is how it works in a similar way. Here's a here's a book from Destiny Image written by Todd Bentley. Bam. Bam 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 bam. And um this is the endorsements. Oh, yeah, lots of endorsements. I can I just take a guess is Heidi Baker on there? Is um is uh, Bill Dr. Johnson? Shayon, oh, Doctor. Shayon, yeah. Is uh Bill, Bill Johnson, Johnson on there? Bill Johnson. Mike let me guess. Don't, don't, let me guess, Steve. Don't don't. don't let me guess. Let me guess. Okay. Um, um, Rick Joyner is Rick Joyner on there? Let me go into the in introduction where there's, it's more extensive. Here, I'll get another book and we'll show. We'll, we'll we'll compare. Are any of are any of these guys on there? Um, one. Yeah, there's James Gull, uh, Stacy Campbell. Stacy no, Campbell. No, she's not on there. Shay Young. Patricia King, she on there? No, actually, there's there's some overlap, but not completely. Yeah, see, that's what they do. You're right. It's it's a circular thing. So they 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 get each other's books, they get each other's manuscripts, and they um, mutually. And if, you, if you stay within that world, in other yeah. words, if you're only listening to all the people who are in that world and and yeah. seeing them reference each yeah. other, it it appears like this whole thing is legitimate. Yeah. But if you just back away, like in the instance of this accrediting agency, and you realize that this accrediting accrediting agency yep. is accrediting a whole bunch of diploma mill types of schools, and and the accredit, accrediting agency itself is not legitimate, it, the whole thing just kind of falls apart. Just like exactly. Destiny it's... Image, to me, is not a legitimate book publisher. They have no academic rigor whatsoever. Wait, Destiny Image is not a, a real? Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry to show. 
All right. So I'm, I'm being sarcastic just by a bit. So um, th then Pagani says, I, I don't share the screen again. I don't need to. But uh, we finally received our doctorate in theology. Who's we? Are the, your name's on it. I don't. Is he talk? Who's he talking about? We is plural, isn't it? I think. But I, I digress. Um, thank you. Can Pentecost. you clarify something, Richard? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt. Absolutely. This whole these pictures that you're showing. This was the honorary degree. No, this is the this is the legitimate. I'll, okay. I'll read it here. Let me let me finish reading it. Good good thought. Okay. Thank you, Pentecostal Theological University. This is our second doctorate this month. One honorary, the other earned. So this one was <laughs> earned. He says. Um. So yeah, this was the second. The one I just showed was the second degree in a month. The doctoral earned. doctoral earned. degree earned in in uh, air quotes. I like you did that. That's good. Um. So just to make it clear, we recorded this interview at the end of October of the year 2023, not that long ago, and we're talking about things that were going on that year, not even a year ago. Here's what it says on his website right now. A graduate of Central Pentecostal Bible Institute, he carries a spirit of wisdom and discernment to unlock secrets of the kingdom with signs and wonders following his ministry. In 2023, he received an honorary doctorate from Next Dimension University for his literary works in deliverance. And as of March 15th, 2024, there still is no mention on Pagani's website of having this real doctoral degree from uh, Pentecostal Theological University. Yeah. Uh, n like I said, my father-in-law told me, he said, no university, no respectable university would ever give a doctoral degree for previously written work. They would give you an honorary degree but that's honorary and you're not allowed to use the title doctor for yourself. Right. Um, like I said, you can use it pre-nominally if you say doctor of letters or Dr. H C or something to that to effect to show that it's not an earned doctorate case in point Pagani used in that first um, uh, first reel that he took down about his honorary degree that um, he was a doctor. And people called him Dr. Pagani, Dr. Apostle Pagani, Dr. Prophet Pagani, et cetera, and so forth and so on. And I mean, probably 30 or 40 times just in the first uh, first few things, comments I looked at, he called himself doctor and he called himself doctor other places um, with the honorary degree. You're not allowed to do it. It's unethical. It is unethical. You cannot do that yeah. if you've received an honorary degree. So. I yield the floor to you for now, if you want to say something. Um, I'm just going to bring this up so that nobody else does. Um, there are times when John MacArthur has been called a doctor. That's interesting. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's not a doctor. He's not, I don't think he has a doctoral degree. No, no, he doesn't. doesn't. He, 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 I, I I'm almost positive. I, I looked into this over a year ago, so it's not fresh, but I think he has at least one honorary doctorate. But his own story is that he was he he got his master's and he stopped because he got into the pastorate right away and he never finished. Yeah. And and you so, know what he he should really honestly say thank you I appreciate the the honor you're giving me but I'm not I do not hold a doctoral degree. He should probably say that to people if he if he can if it's possible for them to correct. I saw at least but, one book that was published um, under his name that referred to him as a doctor and that was wrong. Now, how did that happen? I, I'm I'm guessing that everyone who would, who put this book out, which was just um, it was like a devotional book that was you know taking previously written things and yeah. compiling them, so it wasn't like he sat and wrote a new book. That's yeah. the book that I saw where he was referred to as Doctor John MacArthur. Right. But still, that's not excusable. He, he if it's going to have his name, he should have checked it first, and he should have said, "Oh, oh, oh, wait a minute, don't call me Doctor." And maybe that was an earlier version and he did when it was republished maybe it was fixed but i i just want to point that out that uh if anybody says, well you're a big supporter of john MacArthur," well actually i'm really not i i have to mention him because he's just so big he's yeah he's somebody that everyone keeps referring to and this kind of goes back to what we started talking about which is that everyone thinks you're either a charismatic over here or you're a cessationist uh calvinist macarthur follower and yeah, yeah. There, there there's a whole bunch of middle ground people like myself i'm actually a lutheran and we have and our pastors cannot be called to the ministry they cannot be 
um, pastoring a church without having the essential um, in I ministry. See. They oh, actually okay. have to know Hebrew. Okay. They have to know Greek. So let me share one more uh, screen thing. So just to show that this university that Pagani received an honorary doctor from um, is pro just just le not legitimate in a lot of ways somehow. Um, I'll share the um, banner that they have must have had somewhere around in their school, right? So this is New Dimen uh, Next Dimension or New Dimension, Next Dimension, I think, University. And the new NDU fundamental beliefs. Do you see that? <laughs> I thought you might get a kick out of that. So it's, of course. Wow. Of course. Of course, it's like fundamental and foundational. They're trying to put be cute and put a word together, and but that's not that, a word. That's so dumb. The fundamental belief. So we believe salvation for all, baptism in the Holy Spirit goes. Okay, you know, of course, that's the second work of grace. Divine healing is for today. Um, second coming of Christ. Biblical inerrancy, <laughs> which is funny, uh, and biblical literacy. I don't know that interesting. Uh, nature of divine Jesus, virgin birth, his resurrection, his return, heaven for the saints, hell for the sinners and disobedient, misleading and unrepentant leaders will be punished, I guess. And then the fivefold, and this is interesting. Look at this word here, Steve. Gubernatorial, gubernatorial offices are still relevant in these days. Or I think I, I don't see that word there, but yeah. that's not a word either. Um, so we have two misspellings, miswordings, miss, what do we call that? Creating words. Governatorial yeah. is not a word, but it also shows that they believe in the fivefold offices. Um, oh. So, so yeah, I would... fundamental beliefs um, and governatorial. It's gubernatorial, gubernatorial election or uh, governmental. Office. Right, right. Yeah. So, so yeah. So uh, Pagani here um, it, it graduated from this university with an honorary degree. It's obvious they believe in the fivefold governatorial governatorial officer. yeah governatorial is not a word i think we both realize that um and fundamental beliefs fundamental is not a word as well no self-respecting university would publish their core beliefs their fundamental beliefs <laughs> fundamental beliefs foundational beliefs and misspell the word or create a new word it's just that's I'm sorry, that's laughable. And, and, um, it is, um, as well put on their gov governatorial. That's not a word. Um, you're, you're trying to pronounce it correctly, but if you cr pronounce the way it's written, it would be governatorial. That, that's actually right. You're right. Governatorial. Governatorial. <laughs> that makes it even worse, doesn't it? Gubernatorial. You can pronounce gubernatorial correctly, but that's not the yeah. word. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, that's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's quite amazing. So, um, we can, I move on there if you had thoughts on that or, um, we can, um, yeah, I think it, it just, it's really, it's really telling that these are the people that say, you know, they always make the joke about, doesn't matter if you went to cemetery, oops, I mean, seminary, they make these jokes and they really downplay education and then they go and get their own doctorate degree, but it's fake. It's literally a, a diploma mill, fake doctoral degree that they want to parade to everybody and, and kind of boast about. Now, if you had a real one, that is something to be proud of. You work really hard and not proud in the, in the pride, prideful sense, like I'm better than everybody else, but this, the kind of pride that says, you know, I'm, I, I had this difficult thing that I, I worked really hard at, and it really meant a lot to me. And there's a, a, a self uh, satisfaction of knowing you did something that was difficult. Right. That that's something that pride is is a really confusing word at times. You know, right, right. There's a kind of pride that says I'm better than everybody else, which is obviously not Christian at all. But there's the kind of satisfaction in having done a job you know, very very well done. Like like when I finish a painting and I I feel like I, I did a really good job. I have a kind of pride in that. It's not like I'm a better painter than all the other people. It's right. more like I just, boy, did I, I, this was so hard. It took me so long, but now that it's finished, I have a really good feeling about it. There's nothing wrong That's with right. that. That's right. Yeah. So um, g going on, just sort of t describing the idea of um, uh, misrepresenting one's qualifications or credentials um, in academia it is a form of academic misconduct. Um, like you said, that, that's a, that's maybe what bothers me, right? 
uh, mo- a lot of these guys, I don't know if a Pagani's ever said it before, but yeah, go, go to cemetery to die. I mean, seminary, you know, um, to die spiritually or something like that. And then they turn around and say, look at my seminary degree and look at my doctoral. I got a, I got a doctor of Pentecostal theology. That's another thing. Have you ever heard of, I've never heard of a doctor of Pentecostal theology. That's, that's not a thing. Um, well, it, it makes sense though, theology. because that's the only, that's the only kind of theology they believe in. So, right. So you get a doctor of a THD is is the doc the doctor of theology. No one gives out doctors of Pentecostal theology. No one gives a doctor of reform theology. You get a THD. That's the right. that's the degree. Um anyways, I digress. Sorry. It um, helps when you make up your own rules for your own school. So you can true. do whatever you want. Exactly. I mean, the 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 accrediting agencies do the same thing. They just don't they don't care if the government accredits them or not. They 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 are legal they are legal organizations. So just to kind of make sure that's clear, they mm-hmm. exist. They don't. They're not, you know, non entities, right? They are they are LLCs. They are they are companies. They are uh, whatever uh, you know. They they're organizations, but they're just not legitimate. And so. Uh, back to sort of Pagani's idea of honorary doctorate and, and, and saying he's a doctor when he's, when he's obviously not um, uh, is, is in my opinion, kind of tantamount to stolen valor. Do you know the idea of stolen valor, Steve? It's when you, you wear a uniform with medals and things that you didn't earn and you pretend that you did things you didn't do. And it's, it's, yeah, I don't know what the right word is, but it's despicable. Yeah. So stolen valor um, is the is the idea that you um, use someone's military rank, someone's, uh, uh, you know, a- a credentials and accreditation in the military. So my father's a lieutenant colonel. He retired a lieutenant colonel. And if I were to go get his stripes and bars and go get a, a, a uniform, in the Army Navy store and try to go get a job, go get advancement in my career, get uh, benefits from stealing someone's valor my dad's about he actually had a bronze star he hmm. was awarded a bronze star in 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 uh the first war and and the gulf war and hmm. um so if i were to wear that pin that's his valor he earned it right i didn't earn it and so if you uh if you pretend to have received a a medal or or, or a promotion or lieutenant colonel status in the army and you did not receive you did not earn it that's stolen valor it's illegal it's a right. federal offense hmm. um and this is sort of it's not the same thing it's not tantamount to it but it's similar you've stolen it is similar someone. you've stolen uh accreditation uh, credentials that you did not earn you're using them as if you've earned them well let's let's take the analogy just a step further if there was an organization that issued uniforms with stripes and medals and all you had to do was, you know, fill out a form and pay a small fee. And there was no, there was another organization that said, "Oh yeah, all of these people issuing these uniforms are legitimate because we created a an organization that legit legitimatizes them." Legitimatizes it would be the circular like little world, and everyone wearing those uniforms would say it's legitimate. Well, in a way, it is, but really, it's not because the people wearing the uniforms didn't actually do the things that the real people wearing the real uniforms did. So what's happening here? That's a that's right on the money. It's basically the same thing as as creating organization for stolen valor. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, deceiving the church or the public to bolster your influence, your credentials, your authority, or to bring any other benefit to you in regard to one's academic credentials in this way, I think, is a form of lying to the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Ananias and Sapphira, you know the story in Acts five. Ananias uh, was asked by Peter, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? What did they do? What was their crime? It actually was, it's a relatively small crime. They yeah. they said that they they sold some land, they had some money, and they, they gave part of the money, but they kept some for themselves while claiming that they were giving all of the money. They deceived the church mm-hmm. for the benefit of themselves for their influence right. for their credential for the for people to think more of themselves because in that community in the early church community uh generosity was a high value and so they deceived the church to gain credential to gain uh um influence to gain benefit and what they do they Just, fell down dead 
Why has it was just to injured? make themselves look good? They were already doing something pretty good. They just right. wanted to exaggerate it a bit. They wanted to exaggerate it a bit. Do you think yep. some of these people are exaggerating a bit? Yeah, exaggeration is just running rampant. Um, and the and the whole demon slayer group, they don't know how to talk n- n- like normal sentences and just speak normally about hardly anything. When they talk, it's always this extreme. You know, veins popping out and, you know, exactly, it's yeah. the best of the best. And we're doing, I think the um, the idea of a thought stopping device within yep. the larger, broader, hyper charismatic world. One of them is when somebody's famous and everybody is referring to them because they're famous, then we must believe what they're saying as true. There's no place for skepticism because that skepticism is not against the person. It's against the Holy Spirit. And so you've been told, you know, uh, Catherine Crick or Isaiah Saldivar or Alexander Pagani, these people are are superstars in the church world, and the Holy Spirit is using them as mighty people of God. And if you say anything, if you even express a, the slightest skepticism, like, no, that doesn't sound right. Well, now now you're afraid that the Holy Spirit's really mad at you because you spoke against the anointed one. It's just right, so exactly. dumb. Or you, you you have a religious spirit or you might actually be uh, blaspheming the Holy Spirit, maybe, possibly. Yeah. So be careful. Don't blaspheme the Holy Or be a Pharisee. Just be, be careful. Do not. Yep. You don't want to become a Pharisee. So right. um, I just want to note two more things here. Um, we're running into over an hour, I'm sure, here. But um, Increase Mather was a a person who received the first honorary doctorate in the new world. He was a Puritan theologian. And yeah. just, I mean, if you look at it to his work, just well written, um, well, well, j- politician even um, was involved in uh, lots of different things, negotiations between the Europe and the, and the new world and all these type of things. Um, and he received the first honorary doctorate from Harvard university in 1692. And sometimes this, his reception of the doctoral, his honorary doctorate is justification used by these groups to give out 80 honorary doctorates at one time. Hmm. It's apples and oranges. I've actually heard someone said, someone used it as a defense, that more that 80 doctor, honorary doctorates were given out at Increase Mather's um, uh, ceremony. That's not true. It's it's totally inaccurate. He was the the first one. It's actually history shows him as being the first one to ever receive one. No record at all of any other awarded degrees at that uh, commencement address uh, at that commencement. And, and so um, th- this guy is used as justification for this practice of giving out honorary degrees in the NAR and huh. the extreme charismatic world and these degree mills. It's impossible. You cannot use him. Histor- it's, it's revisionism history. I used that word last night. It's revisionism. Right. There's no Harvard does not have any record. I look into the, the archives of Harvard. It's, there's nothing there. He's he's the only one spoken of in the 1962 or 1692 graduation ceremony at Harvard. They awarded it to him because they didn't have doctoral degrees and they were not accredited at the time somehow. And hmm. there was no accrediting aid. There was no accreditation in that time. And so, um, this opened the door for all sorts of different uh, honorary degrees to be awarded, but um, it cannot be used to justify like 80, de- 80 honorary degrees given out in one ceremony. That's important. It never happens. No legitimate university would do award 80 honorary degrees. Yeah. At one ceremony. It's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's totally illegitimate. And uh, so, yeah, um, I can say that because I've been around enough graduations that, legitimate graduations where honorary degrees were given out and i my brother actually graduated from the citadel when ronald reagan was there and gave the address and he received one so um you know it, it's just not done it's just not done i want to i want to bring something up uh yeah i this is a book that i've read and and actually parts of i've okay. of, i've reread multiple times Edith Blumhofer, an associate professor of history and project director for the Institute for the Study of American Evangelicals at Wheaton College. Oh, this was written in the 90s. Yeah, 93. Yeah. And when when guys like you and guys like me and guys like Daniel Long and a lot of the people that we're all working together with, we know the difference between 
basically a hack, somebody who's pretending to be something they're not, who's yeah. just churning out material either in video form or in book form. This is the this is an example. This was published by University of Illinois Press. Yeah. And I just want to give an example of what it looks like when a real scholar does real work. Okay. The first chapter of this book is called Pentecostalism Through a Restorationist Lens. And it's an excellent chapter. Just full I get of the title. The title makes it it's it's academic. I can tell right away. The title of the chapter. So it has, I've taken lots of notes on this. Yeah. And it is a total of 34. Let me see if it starts on page one. No, it has, it has about 30 pages, actually less than 30 pages for this one chapter, which is packed full of information. Yeah. Because she's summarizing a lot of really important things in just one chapter. Yeah. And then this is, this is called footnotes. This the is footnotes, what a real scholar yeah. does. They don't just say stuff. They they back up what they say with historical research. So in less than 30 pages, she has 97 footnotes. Okay. These are yeah. all footnotes. These are all yeah. from academic historical sources. These aren't my from recent... you know, Cheyenne's book. This is exactly this is I was gonna point like. that out. I was gonna point yes. that out, yeah. So, so exactly, everybody, anybody can write a book. That's the 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 good thing and the bad thing. Anybody can write a book. Yeah, doesn't mean anything if you've written a book. It it could be a terrible book full of lies, and you can still publish it. And sometimes you can even make a lot of money and become famous because of yeah. a book. You can also it, write a great book that no one knows about because it wasn't promoted well or whatever. Exactly. So, oh, I lost. Oh, I just you. disappeared. You all right? You didn't Where'd get I go? Rapture, did you? <laughs> Maybe your camera turned off. Did your camera turn off? Okay, that, that's okay. That, we're back. That my camera cool. died. It's plugged in, but the plug isn't working. So now that I'm looks, using my laptop camera. That looks fine. We can still see Beethoven. That's great. <laughs> um, so just uh, on your point, you're you're right on the money. These 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 people don't write academic work. Uh, I'll give you an example. My in my book, I I I have 165 uh, footnotes in 190 pages. And that's with appendix. I have four appendices and I tried to write, I tried to not be academic actually, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure I get these guys correct what they're saying exact. And, and I'll give you another example um, on the other side of that thing, right? Oh, no, sorry. My paper, I wanted to bring up my paper. I wrote a paper on the new apostolic reformation and its dangers in the world evangelical alliances um, evangelical review of theology lately. And I was a 10 page, 10, 11 page paper, um, with, uh, 75 footnotes and they put me through the ringer. I mean, the evangelical Alliance put me through the ringer to make sure that it was all correct. They hmm. checked and double checked that paper had more peer review than any other paper in that magazine. And, um, explain peer review. Yeah, that's a good question. Peer review is if you submit a academic article to an academic journal, you must have it must be peer reviewed and approved. So um, I had I know I know I had four people read that. You usually have one or two at the most peer review it and say either approve or approve with corrections or approve with, you know, whatever, um, whatever they the reviewer thinks. Um, and so academic journals have uh, different people who review p papers for them who are on the academic level and typically people who hold PhDs or, or doctoral degrees of some type, doctor of theology, THDs, doctor of theology or something. They have to hold some kind of higher academic degree, particularly on the high academic level, like, like you think of uh, JETS, Journal of Evangelical Theological Society, you have to, I believe you have to hold a doctoral degree to be a peer reviewer. And so, um, so there, there's, you know, the World Evangelical Alliance is trying to make it a little more readable, a um, little more for the common person to understand not all this crazy high theological uh, insights and knowledge. Um, and so uh, JETS is a really high academic level. Um, but, but the e Evangelical Review of Theology is not necessarily as high but they really put me through the ringer. I had, um, I, I know four, and I think actually uh, the the highest people in the evangelical, the World Evangelical Alliance read that article. 
because it was a little bit controversial. Um, hmm. You know, it's the NAR. You know, I, I described the NAR from start to finish, you know, trying to give a real big sweeping brush oversight through Wagner and him, his, his, uh, the start of it and him coining the phrase all the way to where we are today. Is that uh, on academia? That is, uh, not on, I'm trying to think where I have it. I have it on, um, research gate. If you want to search me on research gate, I'll send you the link for that. Okay. And, uh, you can post that as well in the show notes. Um, but to, to the point of how you can tell something's a little bit, maybe illegitimate, I think uh, of Modern Day Apostles by Shayan. He has quite a bit of footnotes, 182, um, in in a in a, a little under 200 page book of of text, right? And but if you look, he quotes Wagner nearly half, almost half of his footnotes are one source, really one source. So I mean, I go through it, and each page is or websites. It's really frowned upon in academia to cite websites if you i mean i do a few because in this in this movement you have to cite websites because it's people who are active now and they're not writing people in this movement are not writing academic journal articles wagner wrote uh some some academic journal articles and i quote quote those at length but um it, it's kind of hard to to not cite this movement and not use their own words and websites and, and, and talks on YouTube, et cetera. So, but more yeah, I'm, the, I'm looking at these footnotes. It's hilarious. It's all Wagner, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I there, use that as an example of people who do footnotes. Um, or for instance, Dr. Randy Clark wrote this response letter to a response article to uh, Doug Guyvet and, and Holly Pivik. And um, I looked at that a little bit. I didn't read the whole thing, but he wrote only like a chapter and he had his students write the rest. So I think there was six, I, don't quote me on any of this, but I think there was six or seven students who wrote uh, academic portions of those articles. They don't hold doctoral degrees. They don't, I don't think they even hold master's degrees, most of them. And they wrote an academic article for or with Wagner or with uh, I'm sorry with uh Randy Clark Randy Clark to try to respond to Holly and Doug's um uh critique of them this guy <clears throat> there is more okay more lord more lord we want more <laughs> always more so, Shabba. hey oh you didn't give a a shout out to the campus no that's the wrong show wrong show oh I wish I would <laughs> I need to come on and hit the bar with y'all so I can get a ca campus shout out the German campus you know, shout out. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Sorry for the, I, 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 I'm a youth pastor. Look, Steve, I'm a youth pastor. All this seriousness. I, I do it because it's serious. This is serious business that people are falsifying the message of the gospel. People mm -hmm. are falsifying their own credentials and qualifications, but, but I'm, I'm a youth pastor. I, I'm laid back. I like laughing. I like, I like having fun. I like discipling kids. And, and when I was discipling kids, the discipleship process was interrupted because of this movement. Hmm, interesting. Kids we're getting sucked into it. And that's why I'm bothered by it. I'm bothered by people who claim academic credentials that they do not have because I'm working hard for my credentials. Hmm. I have one more year to go. I have to write my dissertation and it costs a lot of money. And I hmm. am a poor youth pastor missionary. Look, I, I chose the wrong occupation. Youth pastors don't make money, and missionaries definitely do not make a lot of money. So I, I combined, we're poorer than dirt. Anyways, um, it it's it's just it's it's so uh, upsetting, really upsetting that yeah. people would. Uh, and the one last thing I want to say before we before we wrap it up here, um, you, you've heard of the term mail fraud, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. So mail fraud, just as a quick explanation, it's also a federal crime. I knew I had a, a buddy of mine whose father was guilty of, commi or he committed mail fraud and was being prosecuted for it. I don't remember what happened in the end, but um, hmm. he had created a company, uh, basically a shell company that he he required people to send money for their pro products and services and wasn't providing anything, basically. You set up a PO box, you set up a company, a, a fake company, and you have hmm. people send you money for a service that's worthless, basically. So people are possibly sending $500 for a degree from one of these 
fake Christian mm-hmm. universities and or they do go to a university, actually go physically, and they're provided a service, but it's totally a, yeah. a, a, a junk degree. Actually, Don Hill, Don did a degree and did a doctoral degree on um, Smith Wigglesworth. She did a 65-page doctoral dissertation on Smith Wigglesworth. That's laughable. I mean, my dissertation sh- has to be a minimum of 350 pages. Wow. And I ha- and my I just submitted my um, doctoral dissertation for approval. Just not not the dissertation portion, but just to be approved that I can research. I have to be approved by a board that this research is ethical um you have to go through ethical standards to make sure your re- research is 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 legitimate as well and that that alone was 150 pages now i'm i'm an hmm. overachiever maybe too but <laughs> um so it's just it's laughable it really is laughable so i think to yeah to wrap this up this is yeah. a this is an issue that christians of all stripes no matter what your particular leanings are theologically you should care about telling the truth we should we should all care about i mean frankly atheists seem to care more about this sort of thing than christians do yeah. it's really embarrassing and so i am not apologizing to bring this up or or for bringing this up and for getting on these guys cases one of the one of the most frustrating comments is when uh youtube comments say something like you know christians shouldn't be saying bad things about each other because it makes us look bad to the world out there. I'm like, no, what makes us look bad is faking credentials to pretend you're a doctor. That's what makes us look bad. What makes us look better is at least for some of us Christians to call it out. So I I will respond to that. People say negative stuff about other Christians. What about half the New Testament? Every single book in the New Testament outside of Philemon is about false teaching. It's correction. Yeah, they're correcting. They're correcting people. All of the right. apostles wrote to correct Hymenaeus and Philetus. Um, Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him. We handed yes. that one over to Satan. I mean, these are naming names from naming names from the apostles in the New Testament. Jesus yeah. Christ himself said, Watch out, there will be wolves coming among you. Right. I mean, it's almost like people don't believe the New Testament. Do you right. believe? And I asked it last night. Um, d- do people believe that there is a limit? What's the limit? What actually right. would make people say we should mark and avoid somebody? When a, when is a, the limit? Yeah, that's a great question because I don't I don't think they ever want to go there. As long as you're charismatic, as long as you're part of their group, you can get away with almost a- anything. Almost not not everything, but almost anything. It, it appears. Well, let's go through it. Divorce. Uh, extramarital affairs, stealing people's money. Um, I mean, how far does it, how far is too far? Yeah. Divorce and remarriage. Jesus said it clearly. He said it clearly. If you divorce someone and remarry, you commit adultery. So that person, whoever's done that is disqualified from ministry. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a big one. So, hey, well, this has been yeah. great. We got to do this again, and we'll we'll talk yeah, in, in more detail about some other topics because Absolutely. this is really, I, I love this, Richard. Thanks for all the work you're doing, and and uh, there'll be links in the yeah, sure. uh, description, like like all of the videos, and hopefully next time I'll figure out how to plug my camera in so that it doesn't die, and I have to finish yeah. with my bad looking. What is this thing called? It's called a um the webcam, yeah. <laughs> webcam yeah i just like to say thank you to apple for taking a twenty five hundred dollar computer and putting Jeez. in a 720 dpi camera wow <laughs> i've got one of those too yeah <laughs> exactly so uh Thanks yeah so much, we, Richard. if you've got any other questions your listeners viewers reach out i'd love to uh dialogue oh, with them they can reach out on got my a website i've got a i've got a channel too i've got a richard i think it's richard m23 on youtube and my my podcast is called Churchpreneurs. It's church and entrepreneurs stuck together. Someone said asked me what I do, and I said I, I, I do this and this and this. And they said, "Huh, you're kind of an entrepreneur for the church." And I said, "Yeah, I guess maybe. That's maybe like I, found, maybe I'm an apostle. Ah. Fundamental. Yeah, I'm a fundamental. I'm a fundamental <laughs> churchpreneur. That's right. Thanks my, everybody for watching. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye now.
official here, man. Oh, shut up. Hey! Hey.